you have any questions, you can enter them on the right side of your screen in the question box, and we can answer these as we go. Um, so with that in mind, I'd like to introduce Nancy, who will begin the presentation. Thanks very much, Remington, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time today to review uh, RecExpress for Bank Services. With the RecExpress for Bank Services, we're going to give you the ability to automate some of the reconciliation of your bank statements. Uh, you may be familiar with the bank reconciliation tool within the bank services module, so I will point out the different features that you would gain using the RecExpress for Bank Services. So you'll notice it does install within your Sage 300 environment. It, it's what we call an SDK product. It's written using the same software development kit that Sage uses, so it will look and behave the same as your Sage modules do and it does embed itself under the administrative services of Sage 300 so you can determine what users would have access to this module and the features within it. So um, the main screen of RecExpress is where you would be importing your bank statement. So the first difference with this product versus the standard Sage bank reconciliation tool would be um, that you don't require an OFX file you can import any file type. So, you know, whatever you can download from your bank, as long as you can get it in an electronic format. Um, the product currently ships with about 180 predefined bank formats. Typically what we would do is get you to send us a copy of the file that you're able to download from your bank and we can review it and tell you what the correct bank format is to be using in the software. And further to that, if by chance the bank format is not already configured in the software, as long as you're on a current version of Sage 300, the developer will add a new bank format for you for free. So when I say a current version of Sage 300, the standard rule is the current version and two back. So right now that would be version 2018, 2017, and 2016. So as long as you're on one of those versions of Sage 300, then the developer will add a new bank format for you uh, free of charge. So we're going to link to an existing bank code within Sage 300 and you're going to be designing what we call a rules template and I'll show you that in some detail in a little bit but it's where you can start to build out rules so the idea is uh, you know the initial implementation would basically be training and you know setup of some rules that you can think of off the top of your head but the idea is that each time you go to do the reconciliation you can add more rules to the template so more and more transactions will automatically match for you which will give you the time to spend on those anomalies so on this front screen you're going to be able to see some information within Sage 300 so your deposits and withdrawals outstanding any unposted entries and the third column is where you'll see the information relating to the bank statement that you're importing so you just have to click on the import button and go out and browse and pick up the file that uh, you've downloaded from your bank and you know I mentioned that you don't require OFX my example today is actually an Excel spreadsheet so it means that not only could you do uh, bank statements but you could also do credit cards if you can get the credit card statement in some kind of an electronic format so I'm just gonna say okay to import that um, it'll start the import process and it will give you some information related to the import uh, in my case how many records are going to be inserted now as soon as I hit the close button the system's going to go through the matching process based on the information I have set up in the software Rack Express for Bank Services will do two passes of uh, trying to reconcile so the first time it's going to pass through and try and match based on a reference and then the sec it'll go back and pass through all those transactions a second time looking at those that are still outstanding and try and do an, a match based on an amount now if it finds a matching amount um, more than one that are the same 
then it will refer to the date and it will match it based on the closest date to that amount. So once that is imported, <clears throat> the third column on this main screen populates and it will tell us the value of what was imported, the value that matched automatically, the value that was left is unmatched, and we do have a special category called matched with error. Uh, what will fall into this will be where the system has found a matching reference number, but there is a variance in the amount. It's still going to match it based on the reference, but it'll put it into this special category of matched with error. Oftentimes that might be a penny or two if you have exchange rate differences, that sort of thing. But we'll highlight it for you so that you can then determine how you want to handle that variance. So when I go into the main Rec Express screen, I'm now seeing all the details related to the transactions on the bank statement that I've imported. And you'll see there's a number of different import statuses here. But um, first, I just want to highlight the feature where if I click on this box to show bank, it's going to split the screen for me. The top of the screen is still those line items that have just imported on the bank statement. But now I can see the related transactions within the bank services module. So as I click through here, you would see that it's going to highlight the corresponding transaction in bank services. Anything with an X on the statement lines means that it's been reconciled. Um, so there's a number of different statuses. So those that it deemed as a correct match, that matched with error category that I mentioned, those that matched by amount. So as you click on any of these statuses, it's going to filter the information for you. So it's easy for you to review what the system matched. And if by chance there's something that it matched that you're not satisfied with, nothing's cast in stone here. You can certainly override anything that the software matched automatically for you. Uh, it's just a matter of coming down to this used column and saying, no, I don't want to apply it that way. And it will reverse, and you see the status went back to a no match. So although it does the matching for you, you certainly can easily override it. Um, it will highlight those. If there's multiple transactions that have the same amount, it'll isolate those or filter those for you. Ultimately, you'll be left with the no match that we'll come back to in just a second. But another key feature I want to point out with the Rec Express for Bank Services that you do not have within the standard bank services module is the ability for you to match one line item on the bank statement against multiple entries in bank services or the other way around, multiple line items on the bank statement that relate to one transaction in bank services. So that's a feature that you don't have within the standard bank services module. Um, now that's not something that we'll be able to automate for you. That's something that you'll have to do manually. But um, certainly any one-to-one -one type entries, uh, you can create a rule for. So each time you do your reconciliation, ultimately you'll be left with these no match uh, transactions. So just to show you how you would do that one to many or many to one, if I highlight a line here on the bank statement based on these comments, I can tell it relates to three entries in bank services. So you just highlight the line on the bank statement and then you can come down into bank services and you can sort these by reference, by date, by amount or description and you would search for the entries in bank services that you want to match against. And I can see they're here they are here, uh, 4567, the 5896, and 5789. So how I go about matching those is just highlighting the line. And under this used column, double click to say, yes, I want to apply it. And then I could go to my next line and the third line. And it will change the entry, many bank to one statement, and it will uh, put an X here to signify that it's been um, cleared. So that's how you would go about doing a manual process. But anything where it's a one to one, you know, one entry in bank services and one entry on your bank statement, you can start to generate what we call rules. So you'll have a rules template. 
Um, and these rules can be divided by categories. So I'm, gonna, I'm just highlighting deposits for the presentation today. But you can have different rules based on each category. And um, this is where we're giving you a lot of flexibility to utilize any piece of information on the bank statement that identifies an entry. So, you know, the transaction codes are something that the bank assigns and maybe that's all you need to match with but we're giving you this compare description which is a free form field for you to put any characters in to identify that entry on the bank statement and you can do an equal to statement where you're saying look for in this case ACME look for those characters at the beginning of the description string on the bank statement or you can use a like statement where you're saying look for ACME, those four characters together, anywhere within the description on the bank statement. And we've also provided you with wildcard capability. So it means now that it's pretty much unlimited in terms of the information you can use on that entry on the bank statement to identify it. So you could say, look for ACME, and then there's going to be five characters that I don't care about, and then look for these other characters after that. So you can utilize multiple pieces of information from that description on the bank statement. Once you've identified it, you can then specify how you want to handle it within SAGE 300. So if you're using distribution codes or distribution sets in ARAP, you can utilize those here. So you can say when an entry like that comes in, this is how I want it distributed. Or you could specify a GL account. So maybe something like interest coming in on the statement. I just want you to direct it to this GL account. Or you can generate entries within ARAP or the bank services module. So you can specify what the entry type is, whether it's a bank services entry an AP or an AR entry and by the way this will be flowing through your bank services module um, but in the case of AR or AP you could specify a vendor or customer for that entry and then specify how you want to handle it for that vendor or customer you can say generate a prepayment against that vendor or customer and a user is going to come along and apply the funds as necessary or you can auto allocate it so start with the oldest invoice first and apply until funds have been consumed. <clears throat> look for an equal amount or look for a document number to apply against. Now if you set an equal amount or document number and the system can't find that, it won't just skip it. It'll actually revert back and set it up as a prepayment. So then a user can come along and apply it uh, as necessary. So the idea is each time you do a reconciliation, you'll come into here and you'll add new rules so that the next time an entry like that comes through the bank statement, it's going to automatically match for you uh, or handle it the way you'd like to see it handled within SAGE 300. Uh, so back to the main uh, Rec Express screen. Um, you can see into the batches, so you can see into the AP and AR batch lists. You can batch entries or post them. Now, if you choose to post them, you actually have an option under the setup to specify which ones you want to automatically post or, um, you know, which ones you just want to batch and a user is going to go into that module and review them and post them as necessary. If you're utilizing optional fields in SAGE 300, we do have compatibility with optional fields. Um, the bank formats, as I mentioned, um, this product ships around the world. So we do have it divided by uh, North and South America. But, and there's, I think there's 180 or 190 already pre-configured bank formats here. But the easiest thing to do is to send us a copy of the file that you're downloading from the bank and we can identify the correct bank format to be using because you can see you know something like TD Bank there's a number of different formats that are set up so the easiest thing is to send us the file 
and we can review it and tell you which bank format to be using or the fact that a uh, format needs to be set up for you. Um, the transaction codes, they'll be set up when the bank format is set up. So, um, but if for some reason the bank adds a new bank format, uh, sorry, transaction code, then uh, you can just come to this screen and add it as needed. And then the final thing to point out would be an additional layer of security. So I mentioned that we will embed under the administrative services of Sage 300, where you can give users access to this module. So only those users that you grant the access would have access to the module. But we wanted to add a layer of security here in terms of the actual bank accounts. In case you have multiple users that are responsible for reconciling certain bank accounts, this is where you can determine by bank account uh, which users can do the reconciliations for that bank. So that is the overview of the Rec Express for Bank Services. So I'll open it up to any questions that anyone might have. Quiet group today. Just checking through the chat here. Remington, I guess you didn't see anything come in. No, I didn't see anything come in. Okay. If you want to connect your audio as well, if you'd prefer to ask vocally, you can do that as well. Alrighty. Well, um, we'd like to thank you for taking the time today to review the Rec Express for Bank Services. If you do come up with questions later on, by all means, you can contact Remington at Burdette. And uh, if she doesn't have the answer, she knows how to get a hold of me. So thanks very much, everyone, for taking the time today. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I'll actually get that uh, recording sent out as well um, once it becomes available. Yes, I'll send that off to you in short order. Okay, perfect. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you again.